Well, certainly energy efficiency has always been a key part of our policy toolkit. You know, I look to, for example, the IEA's executive director who basically says, we consider energy efficiency to be the first fuel as it represents the cleanest and in most cases, the cheapest way to meet our energy goals. And that it, it's an essential part of the pathway to net zero emissions. Now, in California, we use the concept of the loading order. And by that, I mean, you have a variety of resources. Which do you do first? And we always start with energy efficiency. And then we'll go on from energy efficiency to various types of renewables or other options. Russia supplies much of the oil and gas to the European Union, or at least historically has, and that's been a key source of revenue for Russia. Now, the European Union has been attempting to combat climate change by accelerating its reduction of energy use, uh, by energy efficiency, shifting to renewables and zero emission vehicles. Now, what this conflict with Russia does is it really forces them to accelerate that transformation uh, and to to which something which we may have been thinking they had say 10 years to do, now they realize they need to really make that transformation to energy efficiency and renewables uh, more in the space of a, of a couple of years. And they at the same time need to shift, you know, as they use as little natural gas and oil as possible, they need to be shifting that from Russia to the United States LNG or to more Middle Eastern oil. So what the conflict really does is it forces Europe to really accelerate its transformation of its economy uh, in ways which you know make much more sense. Now certainly, as I said, that also puts pressure if the United States can go through and, and do more savings on of its natural gas, it can provide more LNG to Europe. So again, what this conflict does is it forces us to really accelerate the transformations to wiser energy use. Before COVID, I would go to China about once a year or maybe twice a year and really have a chance to sit down, meet and talk with your scientists and policymakers, but also to see uh, the transformation that was going on. And it was very inspiring to see that transformation and to see the impacts of energy efficiency in China. One of the one of my suggestions is really to continue the to work feedback back and forth between California and US and China and you know certainly Germany, other places, that we can really all work together and build off of what you're doing in on the technology space to really lead to more options globally on energy efficiency. So again, one thing that's important in our dialogues is to talk about which technologies have been most effective and which policies have been most effective to really move those technologies along.